I can hear lots of chips. I'm going to pretend it's popcorn and you're here for the show. And so we're, uh, you are part of that show. And that's why we're here, right? So thank you so much for showing up for Member Day in person, online, for those of you who are joining us by Zoom. This is our annual uh, general member meeting. Uh, we may, by the way, rotate this to uh, other uh, geographies in the future, because I know it's always fun if uh, you're staying up late to tune in or getting up early to tune into something like this, so I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Calista Redmond. If you haven't met me yet, I'm the CEO of Risk Five International, and I'm super excited to bring us all together. Uh, folks, this is your community. This is your neighborhood. These are your friends and colleagues that you've been working with throughout the year, some of you for less than a year, some of you for many years. Uh, and this is our opportunity to come together and to have those conversations, get to know one another. And that in-person time is super valuable. So I hope that you'll take advantage of it, make some new friends, and next year bring even more friends with you because uh, that's how we grow and build. We've got a few uh, agenda items today. I'll uh, kick it off here to uh, Lou Dye, our Risk Five chair, and ask him to say a few remarks. I'll give you some uh, thoughts on what we've accomplished this year, where we stand as an organization, and the road ahead. Uh, Mark, our CTO, will come on and tell you about our technical progress. Tiffany is going to share with you some marketing highlights. And then we'll have a couple of additional items that had come in uh, in, in the uh, open um, suggestion time. And then we'll have some closing remarks again from Lou, and we'll call it a day. And then we'll all join the in Paris party. So, looking forward to that as well. Uh, so with that, I'll hand it over to Lou Dye, our Risk Five Chair. All right, thank you, Calista. Um, I wanna welcome everybody for our Risk Five Summit in North America, our premium event. Uh, I'm Lou Dye, I'm the chair. Um, I know some of you, but there's a lot of people I'm new here. Uh, so I would give you a brief background of myself. Um, first, um, I'm a, a Berkeley grad, so I'm from Berkeley. So by definition, I love RISC-V, right? <laughs> Second, um, at, um, I work for Qualcomm, and uh, I'm actually the semiconductor standards lead at Qualcomm. So I have a strong belief in standards. Standardization is a way to go for the industry. And uh, third, um, I have been working at Qualcomm for quite some time. Uh, for about 15 years, I was the uh, lead for Snapdragon premium tier chips. So I come from product background. So I have a lot of uh, customer focus. So that's my background. Um, as, a, as a new chair, my vision for RISC-V is uh, I want to see RISC-V is kept as a uh, open and single and international standard. And that's the vision I have for the standards. And I, I believe that's a vision that this uh, community has kept it. And well, I would like to see that continue to be kept. And along with that, I want to see that we collectively can aggressively defend risk five. And for, as a, from a customer background, I, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a product background. I want to also see risk five uh, maintain a custom focus uh, for, for, for our standards. In the end, the RISC-V standards success is depend on who is gonna be using the product that based on RISC-V. So let's uh, focus on our end users. And you know, anytime when we have some disagreement with customers, you know, for people in the product side is, we don't discuss with customers on why I did it back then. I only ask my customers what I can do better to earn your business. Right, so I'd like to see us to focus on that part. And um, so I think, uh, you know, I want to thank all of you that uh, you have uh, provided all the support and the contributions throughout the years and this year as well. And Calista has uh, a lot of highlights to share with you and I'll come back to talk to you afterwards. Thank you. It's been a wild year, folks, and I am so proud of this community. We have come together uh, virtually, geographically, technically, 
in our market development groups and launched several new things and brought many things to ratification. A few of the highlights this year that I'd like to share with you is that uh, as of the end of October, we are now more than 4,000 members. That's 24% growth just since the beginning of this year. Uh, we got a couple more months to tally up in that. We've ratified 18 specifications or are on course to ratify that number by the end of the year. Uh, we have a lot of industry momentum going on. In my keynote tomorrow, you'll hear a number of those stories. And you know, at the end of the day, Risk V is successful when you are successful. You are a lot of different stakeholders. We have students. We have professors in academia. We have folks in research. We have collaborations in industry. We have design tools and uh, different types of things to design a processor. We have hardware design. We have software that rides on top. So many different interests that are engaged in this. And when you're successful, that means that we collectively are successful because we all need each other. So that industry momentum is really important. This year, you've seen a lot of different advances here from our uh, special interest groups as well as market development groups in automotive. You've seen a lot of advances around Android, uh, which stemmed from work that has gone on early in our Android special interest group. You've seen data center, HPC, academia, and security all as special interest groups, and we are now complementing our automotive market development group with a data center market development group as well. So whether you're invested deeply in the technical aspects and attributes that are necessary for compelling solutions, or you're thinking about the end user and the customer uh, preferences and things that they need to be successful or helping to show a particular industry and help seed that industry with thought leadership, these are important aspects to consider. In our academic and training SIG, we continue to cultivate resources for use and leverage around the world. These range from uh, labs, lectures, and other things to really uh, tune uh, existing courses to risk five or to develop new courses on risk five. Which brings me to talent. Talent is fundamental to the success of any of us, whether that is engaging in virtual career fairs to find your next role or to find your next hire. These are things that are uh, instrumental. Uh, we find that a lot of that uh, engagement happens through online learning as well. So online learning is a program we started two years ago. Since 2021, we've seen 26,000 people sign up for our courses. 26,000. We started this program thinking like, well, let's see how it goes. It looks like we could shore up some resources. And we've had more than 8,000 uh, just this year alone. So it shows that the value of skill building is essential to all of us, whether you're early in your career or looking for a deeper dive on a particular subject. Uh, that community engagement is continuing with uh, local meetup groups and other types of community-led initiatives around the world. We now have requests coming in from all kinds of different countries that want to have risk five days. The element of coming together in person, whether it's a meetup in you know several dozen of our meetup groups, or it's a risk five days where you have both an infusion of technical sessions as well as industry uh, leadership or it's risk five summits, which we now have three around the world in China, Europe, and North America. This is reflective of who we are. What we're doing transcends geographies, transcends the boundaries, and holds the promise of being the open standard for compute for generations to come. We're not the first standard that's done this. You think about things like USB or ethernet or web protocols like HTTP. These are things that transcend all boundaries that we all then build upon and innovate with and think about as a differentiator in the work that we each do every day. So, I, you know, and these are things I don't even probably need to tell you. You are part of this community. You have signed up to be part of the Risk Five community, and we're proud of that. We're continuing to work on things like diversity, you know. Out of like 180 speakers at this conference, or 
some big number, there are only nine females. That's not a, not a good ratio, guys. Bring diversity to our conferences. Bring diversity where you see it. Help to cultivate the talent around you. Invite them, engage them, uh, them being, you know, people like me. Um, we are that welcoming community. We are that inclusive community. And we look and uh, seek to grow and become richer for the folks that engage with us. Uh, but to that end, we continue to sponsor mentorships, uh, travel and registration scholarships to attend events. We proactively look for speakers in our events and have uh, virtual career fairs. If there's more we can do, let us know. If there are things you're doing that we can help support, let us know. We're here for you. So where are we going from here and what does the organizational health look like? We are doing a lot of process improvements around member engagement, matching up communication systems with back-end CRM systems, looking for ways to automate uh, pieces of the process that become cumbersome and administrative for uh, the community or for staff. As you probably know, we're kind of a small staff. There are 13 of us proudly wearing our RISC-V fashions as often as possible, but uh, yeah, we're a small staff. So serving a community that, uh, by the way, is now around 14,000 people who are engaged in our groups, it's a lot. We have a lot to serve. And so as we get technical work done through the member contributions, we look for your contributions in marketing and managing teams and leading different groups. Uh, we really appreciate that. We also have been doing things around documentation and shoring up different technical aspects that help with member engagement as well as uh, you know, streamlining and accelerating and smoothing out the onboarding process. We've improved knowledge sharing. We've launched uh, regular newsletters, technical sessions, which are live uh, webinar style deep dives. Uh, we've also launched uh, other member and stakeholder type webinars, such as uh, automotive that happened just in the last week. Our financial results have been somewhat flat year over year. There hasn't been a lot of growth uh, financially this year. Uh, and that can be attributed uh, largely to economic conditions. It's been, you know, sort of a different swings in different parts of the world this year. Uh, we are looking at in, uh, improving our investments in a compliance and compatibility program, as well as a developer experience, accelerating that on-ramp for our software stakeholders. And then we're looking at deeper engagement with board members. Uh, we now have several different uh, board level committees that are strategically deeply focused on different aspects of the organization. And overall engagement, that 14,000 people engaged in the community, that's up 40% over last year. And you know, we're still serving that with the same, with the same uh, team. Where are we going from here? Continued focus on technical progress, continuing to ratify things, shore up any gaps, and progress the state of the art so that we all have the foundational building blocks to be successful, driving engagement, talent, and adoption, continuing to you know, build on our LEARN program, market development groups uh, by different industries, looking at uh, some of the regional engagement and activities that we can do. We've had a lot of requests from new regions that haven't been as active as before, and continuing to support academia. Uh, in the software ecosystem specifically, that's where that developer experience investment is going to come in, and uh, also the compatibility and, and compliance. And then we're working towards more uh, industry-specific special interest groups as well as market development groups. And then uh, streamlining, continuous improvement organization. You've heard that before. What policies, practices, and, and other procedures can we adopt from organizations to make it a very streamlined experience for you, our members, uh, engaging in the important work that we do. So a lot of things to uh, be proud of and a lot more that we plan on doing. And I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mark Himmelstein, our CTO, to talk about the technical stuff. Thank you, Clesta. Hi, everybody. Um, I, 
I just want to, uh, you know, uh, take a minute to, uh, so this is yours, actually. So the wrong way. There we go. I want to take a minute to just talk about what we've done over the last couple of years. So since the second half of 2021, we've already ratified uh, around 36 specifications. That's incredible, right? You're, you're talking about an, an amazing amount of work by this team to get this done. And, and I've been asked by people, why are ratifications important? Well, they're important because what we share together is A, creating these specifications so that we can do implementations, but B, so that we can share the software ecosystem work. Whether it's you know, you know, done inside of RISC V or it's done in cooperation with RISE, the amazing amount of work that RISE is starting to do, we're very excited about that, or working with upstream projects or working with commercial entities. So that's why we go ahead and do this. That's why ratifications are important. We have to go ahead and make sure that we have you know, an ability to implement things that are useful in actual products down the end. So that's, that's really very critical. Um, some other piece of information, we have 62 active technical groups that are doing uh, you know, uh, specs and strategy and uh, governance. Um, uh, about 25, 26 of them are actually working on specs. So this is really incredible. Plus we do a bunch of fast tracks that actually don't have task groups uh, to do their work. We've had over 20,000 commits with over 25 million lines of contributions. So that's, you know, uh, documentation, it's uh, tests, it's uh, formal models, it's just an incredible amount of work by this team. That's just a, a, just a couple of numbers. But I think what's more important is <laughs> how do we do this, right? This is, an, again, an incredible amount of work. Well, we did it by building an engineering organization. This isn't a typical standards organization. We aren't talking about a Wi-Fi standard with one protocol that's developed every, you know, five or ten years and, you know, has one driver with, you know, some setup and some user applications. We're talking about everything from IP up to applications and everything in between. So when I first started, we had 15 groups, 95% of them were ISA. Now we have, you know, 62 groups and two thirds of them are non-ISA. That's the hardware software interface. So this year, I just want to point out, you know, you know, one of the big ones was IOMMU. Five specifications came in, we brought them down to one. And so, uh, it, you know, and the, and the community did this. So incredible amount of work. Also, um, you, know, we, you know, we have a, a great sense around quality. We have acceptance criteria. Um, and so it's, you can't go ahead and get a spec out unless it goes through the hoops. It has to have a proof of concept. And we do all this with a volunteer force. So at this time, I just want to say thank you to the, these folks. So first, anybody who's a chair or a vice chair or RISC-5 staff, please stand up. Give these folks a hand. Okay, now anybody who's participating at all in technical groups, please stand up. <laughs> Including those. I know some of you are sandbagging here because I recognize some of you. Uh, the important thing is to thank you for this. We could not get this stuff done without you. It's the only way this gets done. We tell people all the time, if members don't want to do something, it doesn't get done. So, uh, you know, if you're doing stuff, thank you, keep doing it. If you aren't doing stuff, come help us do it. Uh, very important. Um, so, not only do we have all the ISO specifications we talked about and things like that, um, but this year we also, you know, have continued our program. So we have three major programs, Dev Partners, who help us do the work that's needed for ratification, RISC V Labs that help us get, um, you, you know, a, a test environment for people who want to test, 
Uh, the biggest one is China Academy of Sciences, which has well over 300 SBCs that anybody can log into any time. Uh, and uh, we also have the Dev Board Seed Program, which has shipped hundreds of, of uh, boards uh, to, to you know, folks doing things like um, uh, research or uh, bringing up distros and, and uh, we supply them to hackers. We supply them to free RTOS for, for, uh, to support Amazon. So, you know, we make sure that people get the boards that they need. Things have gotten better this past year with supply chain stuff. Plus, we've added some things. Um, uh, Calista mentioned some of them. I'm not going to go in detail, but we launched the newsletter, so you don't have to be an expert in 62 groups to figure out what's going on. You can go on to Tech Announce, get the newsletter. It comes out twice a month, and you can tell what all the new things are that are, that are going on. Uh, we also uh, started the Tech Sessions, which uh, you know monthly go ahead and, and get people in a room and, and go into detail. We also are you know, starting a, a software clearinghouse, so you can easily find all the components you need to bring up your system or your software or your applications. I'm not going to go through, through this in detail. You've seen this slide many times. Uh, just you know, understand profiles took two and a half years to birth. Okay, It was a big deal. And it's a big deal because we need to be able to tell the distros and the tool chains and so on and so forth what to target. We have a roadmap here. We're doing stuff in the future. But we don't always agree. So how many of you have heard about the C discussion? OK. Uh, it's, it's controversial, right? It's contentious. It's emotional. But guess what? We're the only architecture on Earth where you can have this discussion. People get into a room. Sometimes they're passionate. But we can actually talk about the pros and cons and come to a way to come to a conclusion. Not everybody's going to get their way. But I guarantee you, part of my job is to make sure that everybody feels like they're heard. And that's true everywhere. And this may be the first technical discussion that goes to the board for resolution in my three and a half years. So it's a big deal. So when somebody goes ahead and says, hey, are you guys going to go fragment? Or you know, is, is there a contention? You go back to them and you tell them, no, this is the strength of risk 5 we can have an open discussion about something tough, and, and like we actually do it in a professional way. This is the most important thing that we can be doing now. We've got to get a platform spec out. Like ARMS SBSA, we need to be able to tell people who are building systems what they need to do. There are you know, these basic building blocks, the ones with the, the checks on them, um, Four out of five actually have groups working on. The fifth one is being run out of the, the security committee. Uh, and we actually have an acting chair of the first server platform, TG, who's working on a charter and going to bring all this stuff together uh, in a specification. Um, we've done an incredible amount of work this year. I, I just don't know what to say. We're, we're currently sitting at 12 specs, but, but you know, if things go well, we'll get to 18 by the end of the year. That's an incredible amount of work. It, anybody who's gone through this process, we have a life cycle. We have a life cycle guide. We have you know, you know, a whole document on how to get to ratification. It's a lot of work. And I got to, again, congratulate and thank everybody for, for doing that. But what's coming soon? It, again, a huge list. Platforms are on here very clearly. Um, we have uh, those say from IBM, who's working on the matrix uh, uh, w uh, proposals uh, with Abel. I don't know if Abel's in the room, but um, but he's running the vector SIG. There's going to be two matrix proposals: one that lives in 32 bits, and one that probably lives in 64 bits. It's incredible, and I, I know that these guys are going to do an incredible job. I've been to the meetings. Uh, it's a, it's a quite a, a, a task they've undertaken. Again, just like IOMMU, there's four or five implementations out there, let alone specs, and they're working very hard to, to get us to a, a single uh, agreed-to specification. So just like Vector, it's okay for RISC-V for people for time to market to go ahead and release something. Uh, 
And then when we come out with 1.0, people are migrating. So uh, thank you very much. I think that's it for my list of things. And I'm going to hand it off to Tiffany. Thank you. Well done. Congrats. Hi, everyone. Um, I know I kind of stand, I think, between us and the Empiris reception. So I'll keep it short-ish. Um, first, I do want to say thank you all for coming today and for being here. Last year, I stood in front of you, or some of you, and I was just two weeks into the job. I still haven't quite hit my one-year anniversary, but it's been really exciting to see the progress that's been made by this community. And it's really exciting to be able to showcase it here. Our whole theme around RISC V Summit North America 2023 is, is really about RISC V is here and really demonstrating the progress and demonstrating that it's real. And it's exciting to finally see us uh, come to life. Um, so regarding events, as Calista mentioned, we've migrated from one RISC V Summit or, or, or two, and now we're at three. We did have RISC V Summit Europe this year, which just was a phenomenal community event. Um, for me personally, it was so fun to see there and really see and experience the community and the community feel. And there's some things we're trying to do just to replicate that and really bring a better sense and a stronger sense of community um, to this event. Uh, China, for those of you who attended, I mean, they actually effectively had to shut down <laughs> registration because they sold out uh, with 2,000 registrations. So again, just a great event. And really the amazing thing both about RISC V Summit Europe and RISC V Summit China is that predominantly run by engineers, or by engineers, by volunteers, by engineers and volunteers. Um, but it's really like amazing to see, you know, the effort and the care and the passion of the community to um, bring these really important events to life. So uh, RISC V Summit Europe, again, we had that in Spain in June. We had more than 500 attendees, which really exceeded our expectations. Again, China had more than 2,000 in-person registrations. And I'm really excited. Um, RISC V Summit North America, please round up a few of your friends because we are like one handful of way away from crossing 1,000 registrations which um, for us is exciting because a couple weeks ago, we weren't looking at that number. So yeah. Um, and again, I hope you're all really excited. My little plug for the event, if you haven't heard, I mean, there's just some great content. Um, you know, it was so exciting to be down at CM the show floor. You've probably heard that we have a developer zone, as Calista um, was talking about. Or we have uh, 40 boards that were sort of submitted. And for me, it was so exciting to go down and see the floors that being, was being set up and to see, you know, somebody actually picking up a board and looking at it and like the smile on his face. It was like, that is what we want to do. That's what we want. We want people to come see, touch, experience, feel. And it was so nice to see that finally happening. Um, we did have other events. We were there present at Embedded World with some of our members. We were at Design Automation Conference, plus there was RISC Five Days Tokyo. There were so many other events. So... I think we're closing in on over 90 events this year and counting. Um, just lots of great media coverage throughout the year. Uh, and the plug to save the date, uh, RISC V Summit Europe will be taking place in June of next year. Um, it'll be in Munich. And Embedded World uh, will be back there, and that'll be in April in Nuremberg. Uh, oh, wrong way. Did the same thing. Um, just some other things we focused on. Uh, we really focused on strengthening our social and online presence. Uh, we did launch a newsletter as well, sort of an overall member newsletter, where if you have looked at that, I know it's lots and lots and lots and lots of information. But again, the intent is how are we being, how are we able to communicate to all of you like the exciting things that are happening. Because again, as a community, we really want to share that progress. We want to share the excitement and make sure you're aware of what's really exciting about it. Um, in general, we've also been working on other programs, like great things like really seeing Risk 5 Exchange growing. If you want to see what's been done, um, you know, what is available on Risk 5, check it out. Check it out. We have our landscape, like which you've seen and you will see tomorrow. We're just continuing to grow with ecosystem companies and, and what role they play in um, the overall Risk 5 ecosystem. Uh, and again, since I am, I am mindful <laughs> that uh, I want to get to the reception too, I, like all of you, I'm sure I'm looking forward to a drink. Um, so I think the big thing when we met with the marketing committee earlier, I, I think my push as Mark was talking about and Calista's talking about, our ask is that again, you know, we're really only as good as our members. 
and from a marketing perspective and everything else, you know, to amplify this success, like we are really relying on the community and we just look for you to engage. If you're doing things that are, you know, we should be shouting about, be sure you tell us because um, if we don't hear from you, we might not be able to do it. So please engage with us. We are really excited and we want to share your progress. As I often say, you know, my primary goals are I want our members to be wildly successful and I really want to in, make sure that we are evangelizing risk five. So that's my goal. That's our goals. Um, so just be sure that uh, you help us do that. So thank you. So there were a uh, couple of submitted topics, and then we'll open for a little bit of Q&A. So as you can see here, uh, a couple of uh, items. Do you want to come up here? We might as well just come up and stay up, just in case there's more to dive into here. Yeah, so first of all, I, I will tell you, uh, I, I'm a software guy. <laughs> I you know ran Solaris for years and so on and so forth. and and. You know, because we do a lot of non-ISA stuff, so it was really, uh, I think, fortuitous to get me in play here, but these are more implementation-related questions. So I had to go to Krista, so I don't think Krista's in the, in the room. Are you? Oh, you are in the room. Do you want to just, you know, speak the answers, or you want me to t say what you said? Okay. <laughs> for, for the first topic, um, I think Krista says this could be a really good idea. Somebody should do it, right? So we're... Uh, you know, we're not saying you shouldn't do it, but again, we're driven by what our members do. So if somebody wants to go ahead and do this, uh, we'll help them in every way, shape, or form that we can. So um, anyway, I hope that answers the question. Oh, great. That's wonderful. And, you know, you can send us... Oh, I'm sorry. He, he said they are trying to do that in the Austin meetup. And again, we have a technical newsletter, so if you want to go ahead and send mail to help rivers 5org we'll, we'll get it into the, the newsletter. Um, and then the second one, uh, also, uh, you know, my understanding, uh, if I understood Krista correctly, is that when there's, a, you know, um, uh, server implementations out there, this, this stuff will come naturally. Um, but, you know, today we're still, so certain things, the ramps take longer for certain things. You know, if you're doing an IoT device or embedded, you can probably get something out six months or a year. Disk drives probably more like a year and a half. Uh, servers are probably three to five years. So, the, you know, you should expect that you're going to start seeing more and more server announcements over the next year or two. Uh, and with that, you're going to see it drag uh, things like this uh, with it. Is that, Krista, is that uh, fair? Okay, cool. I think I got these. Are you going to ask for more questions? Anyone else have questions they'd like to pose? We, I know we've just gone through like a huge level of information. Here's everything we did. Here's where we're going next. Here's some questions you know that we received. Are there any other questions or thoughts that uh, we could share here? I know it can be a little bit difficult. I don't know that we've had any come in online at all. And I, I know that we're simultaneously sending this out on the Zoom. Anything uh, come in online? We got nothing there. Everyone's really excited, even on the, uh, the, live, uh, the live feed. So uh, closing remarks. We'll bring Lou back up. I think um, Tiffany forgot there's another line of defense. So before the drink, I, you still have one more slide. So <laughs> um, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, my view is uh, RISC-V is truly at a inflection point. Um, we have uh, come from a, um, I, I will call that uh, age of academia, where we have the concept and we have gone through the age of uh, startups and which is the development. And uh, I know we have a lot of startup folks here, and I, but I think all of your goal is to enter the next stage of the age of deployment, 
where you can actually sell everything to your OEM and see the product in the market. So that's all of, you know, all of us have that goal. Um, but we have a moving target. Our customers uh, may have uh, a new request and our competition is not sitting still. So it is important for us to listen to our customers and uh, learn and we will adapt and we will fit and we will, we will meet our customer needs. And um, the, I, 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 I mentioned previously that I was from a product background and when I was doing product, I was mostly on the verification side. So in verification or in our product, we say quality wins the long run. Um, the, the first impression is very, very important. I think all the startup folks will know that when you make your first pitch, when you sell to your first customer, it's very difficult. And after the first one, things start to follow. And as the same thing, you kind of keep to the startup mentality, it's like people say, make your first million is the most difficult part. Once you made your first million, the money will follow, right? So I hope, you know, everybody will, you know, uh, focus on the quality and help us to drive the quality and make the first win. And for all of, all of you here, I have seen, we have many chairs and we have many uh, key contributors here. Uh, we want you to, you know, help our community to, uh, to, to show your expertise and, uh, and contribute to the TGs and um, porting and optimizing your code. And finally, uh, providing the hardware reference uh, to the community groups. So I hope, you know, this is my last slide and the, the last thing for, for our um, members meeting. And uh, I hope your first drink is not the hardest one. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's it. Uh, and let's uh, talk amongst yourselves. Make a new friend. Make that one of your missions this week. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.